Welcome, Belated Techies, to Belated Tech Musings. It is easy to think of Texas Instruments as a calculator company, as the calculator is TI's one dominant consumer product in the first quarter of the 21st century. In fact, calculators are only 3% of the company's revenues and 5% of the company's profits. The majority of TI's business is embedded computing systems, or specialized microprocessor-based electrical circuits that are used to control a dizzying number of electrical, optical, wireless, and mechanical functions in many of the products used by businesses, consumers, and governments. Texas Instruments is the Briggs & Stratton of the electronics world, where manufacturers all over the globe choose to outsource many of the functions of their products to Texas Instruments. But in 1979, Texas Instruments wanted to be the label pasted on the front of most electronics products instead of being buried in the guts. And to that end, TI attempted to corner the personal computer market. The company had its own microprocessor, its own graphics chip, its own peripherals, and its own software. So TI rolled the dice and bet the company and lost. In episode 14, we took a look at Texas Instruments Appliance Personal Computer Power Play with the TI-99 Personal Computer and the unexpected outcome. You'll find a link to episode 14 below. So what gave Texas Instruments the idea it could corner personal computers, a market already dominated by several well-positioned players? Because TI had already done the same thing in calculators. In 1972, Hewlett Packard stunned the electronics world with the introduction of the first electronic slide roll, the HP 35 better known as the first scientific calculator. In short order, several other electronics heavyweights jumped into scientific calculators, including Casio, Canon, Sharp, Sinclair, National Semiconductor, and Sanyo, to name just a few. Also of note was a typewriter and adding machine manufacturer called Commodore International. In episode one, we examine the rise of Jack Trammell and his company Commodore International and the importance of scientific calculators to Commodore's path to personal computer dominance. Hewlett Packard and its revolutionary HP 35 was reviewed in episode three. You'll find a link to episodes one and three below. Thus, in 1972, Texas Instruments found itself holding the integrated circuit bag while Hewlett Packard and its imitators were making a fortune in electronic calculators. TI quickly responded with the SR50, its first electronic scientific calculator, for about half the price of the HP35. But it was a V2 product and built using algebraic notation for logic instead of HP's popular reverse Polish notation. Texas Instruments fought back by raising the price of its calculator chipset to electronics manufacturers, including Commodore, that did not manufacture its own logic. This successfully squeezed out a large number of players, but the coup de grace was accomplished by TI introducing its own inexpensive scientific calculator. In 1976, TI shipped to market the TI-30, functionally the same as the $150 SR-50 and the $350 HP-35 for only $25. In one fell swoop, TI destroyed the calculator market and took over, squeezing everyone else out other than HP, Casio, and Sharp. The success of the TI-30 set the stage for its encroachment into HP's premium scientific calculator niche and provided more than enough marketing muscle to hold the Japanese competitors Sharp and Casio at bay. Let's take a look at the TI-30 and its ultimate importance to Texas Instruments in the present day.
To create the TI-30, Texas Instruments removed every penny it could think of from the design of the rival HP-35. The buttons featured no labels and instead were stenciled onto the faceplate. The vacuum fluorescent display was mounted to an easier to assemble circuit board. Alkaline batteries were used rather than rechargeable NICAD battery packs. No AC adapter was included. The on-off mechanical switch was eliminated. And the total amount of plastic was reduced for the case. After it was all said and done, the TI-30 still offered a similar number of scientific functions as the HP-35. The TI-30 had 40 keys as compared to the TI-35, but this was because of the nature of the algebraic notation used instead of reverse Polish notation. That meant that the TI-30 had store, recall, sum, and exchange key for memory functions, which added two buttons. There were two buttons for on and off in place of the mechanical switch on the HP-35. And the TI-30 had parentheses buttons and an equals button which were unnecessary on the HP-35. Nevertheless, the differences between the TI-30 and the HP-35 are fairly minor. Sanyo, Canon, Casio, Sharp, Sinclair, and National Semiconductor all offered perfectly functional competing scientific calculators. Most of these designs were quirky as compared to the HP-35, with the exception of the FX-101 from Casio and the EL-500 from Sharp. Thus, it is no surprise that only Casio and Sharp survived TI's invasion of the calculator industry. Texas Instruments released the SR40 Professional Calculator at the same time as the TI-30, about 50 bucks. The SR40 replaced the SR50, which was designed to appeal to engineers and scientists with target customers for the HP-35. The TI-30 was intended for students and general consumers. But the reality was that the SR40 was almost identical to the TI-30 in form and function, with premium differences intended to mimic the more expensive HP-35. The TI-30 quickly became the low-end calculator of choice and soon dominated the market. The design was so successful that subsequent Texas Instruments calculators used the same case, faceplate, battery, and button designs. For example, TI's first programmable calculator, the TI programmer seen here, was almost identical and only different in the blue stencil used to signify second functions on 15 of the buttons. The TI-30 sold for five years, finally being replaced in 1980 by a complete redesign centered around an LCD display. The new model continued its market dominance for another 10 years, receiving yet another complete makeover with a three-line LCD display in 1993 and being designated the TI-30X. Finally, the TI-30X and its iterations were replaced in 2018 with a six-line display-based TI-30X Plus, the low-end scientific calculator model manufactured by Texas Instruments today. The TI-30X Plus is by any measure an excellent value scientific calculator, but is it needed in the era of the smart device like the Apple XS or 11? For example, the TI-BA2 Plus financial calculator available for $20, is also available as a smart device app for just $15. This difference in price may not seem significant, but consider instead the high-end TI Inspire CAS calculator, available for $140. That calculator is also available as a smart app, but for $30, $110 less. Given the likely $70 gross profit of the Inspire, it seems that the $30 take for the app is a poor trade-off for Texas Instruments. Is TI worried? Not likely. The multifunction nature of a smart device and its relatively high cost means it is a poor substitute for academic settings where focus and integrity are at a premium. And the relatively low price of scientific calculators means that they can be treated as cheap utensils and one isn't afraid to lose, as opposed to a critical smartphone or tablet that one seems to rely on to conduct their daily affairs. Do you agree with our analysis? Let us know by dropping a comment below. If you like this kind of video, let us know we should make more by clicking the like button. Hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell icon will also help you stay informed when new episodes are released. Links to Texas Instruments, episodes 1, 3, and 14, and other BTM videos can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally clicking our Instagram feed, where we post pictures from upcoming episodes and our Twitter account, where all new episodes are announced. Thanks for watching.